So Ever Deadly premiered last Friday, and it's going to be showing all this week as well at Tiff Bell Lightbox and Scotiabank Theater. I have not seen it yet, which is probably a good thing because I would just be gushing this entire interview long, and I would give way too much away to anybody that has not yet seen it. So I'll start with this. The trailer is intense. It is raw. It's funny. It's gory. It is very entertaining. All of these things make me so interested in seeing this. Now, Tanya, this is a documentary following your career in none of it as a musician and as an activist. Chelsea, you're a Canadian documentary filmmaker. How did this match Made in Heaven come about? Uh, do you want to start? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, we had a, a, a mutual friend, um, uh, Ray Spoon, who's a musician who I had made a film about and Tanya had seen it and um, uh, Ray introduced us and I was a huge fan of Tanya's and I sort of um, had wondered if she was interested in, in film or in, in making a film and being part of a film. So um, yeah, we met up and hung out and we just got along really well. And I think we found out that we have like similar tastes and um, yeah, it just kind of organically felt like it would be a good fit to work together. Yeah, and we, I, we, we got along well, which was really important, but Chelsea's very talented filmmaker. And I have to very, I have to be coaxed to be in front of the camera. I don't like the camera. It's hard for me to be in front of the camera. I, uh, I, I love music and I love writing and I love improvised sets. Uh, when I do concerts, I ask people to shut their phone off because I don't like intimacy of what we do in the concerts to be uh, sullied by just having uh, fragments of it. So it was, hard for me to be in front of the camera, but Chelsea was very good at making me feel comfortable. That's so important. That's, that's how you get out with your best stuff and how you allow yourself to be willing to be vulnerable and real and you, right? So how long has this film been in the work? I like can't remember and everybody asks us that and I should probably just like look it up. Uh, like, like, look at my emails and be like, when did the, like we first hang out? Um, we, I think in 2016. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we didn't start doing anything until much later. Mm -hmm. the, the process of spending time together to make sure we wanted to work together. But it worked. It, the, the weird thing is uh, COVID gave us a really lovely opportunity to relook at the film and to put some things in that we wouldn't have had time to put in, like all the animations. We, it was really good to be able to put the animations and I loved them. Yeah, I just feel like COVID really is where we found the film. Like, because I think we both, um, you know, Tanya's obviously like super <laughs> in demand musician and, um, you know, it's hard to, to just work on one thing in film, like you kind of to like make a living you need to sort of be working on multiple things. But like when COVID happened, it was just like, it sort of like brought this, like brought the whole film into focus. I threw myself entirely um, uh, into the edit process. And, um, and then Tanya and I just had like this amazing back and forth where I feel like we really found the film where I was sending her scenes she was feeding back into it and we had this kind of like yeah that's I think together that's where we kind of found the film in my and from my perspective really like the way Chelsea was able to take uh, when when I was not comfortable doing something you were so happy to take it out you know some some people make documentaries will push on purpose to get to make it more extreme or to push their subject out of their comfort zone. And you were just so respectful. And we just have often just laughing, laughing <laughs> about certain things like, 
do you want to talk about your vagina in a film Jill? <laughs> how do you feel about that that part out then <laughs> i love it i love it i'm Fair all enough. about the open <laughs> now um you know on a kind of a more serious note uh, very a more serious um, I understand this movie, uh, in this movie, there, there are a lot of stories, Kenya, about your family and um, Inuit Canadian history. Uh, so how did you feel, you know, getting that open, you know, on the note that you were saying you didn't get pushed by Chelsea, but you were open and you were allowing yourself to kind of go there and be vulnerable for all to see. How did that feel? I was very, very, or we were very fortunate that my mother was willing to open up um, because typically Inuit, Inuit people, we tend to not complain so much or be the loudest squeaky wheel with certain things. So my mom, my mom being able to open up about the relocation was really wonderful. And I'm glad that we're getting that information out because uh, so much of what happens, what transpires, with indigenous people aren't, it's not put into any curriculum. It's not made available to the every man or, or citizens of Canada. Well, obviously because it's extreme wrongdoing by the government. The government doesn't want that information out. That's why it, it gets uh, repressed, suppressed. So being able to have our family history on screen is I well it's my favorite part of the film of the whole film when my my mother is talking and what Chelsea did with the found footage what they did with the actual footage it, it helps take it home what what happened and it's so recent I think that a lot of Canadians really love this idea of Yes, there was a genocide long ago, but no, it's it's happening now, and it's very recent. Uh, I attended residential school for high school, very recent, and it's just a really big honor to be able to talk about that. To thank my mom for opening up. Now, um, can you tell me a bit about the seal hunt and hunting in the North in general? Because it's definitely highlighted in the trailer and it is not sugar-coated. Ah, well, every time you eat a pastrami sandwich, something died, so maybe get over it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact answer I was hoping for. <laughs> so silly and once once you're up there you see the land and it's quite a peaceful process uh being part of the ecosystem like the human is part of the ecosystem it's not we're not removed so it's there's no negativity to it as you wouldn't fault a polar bear for eating a seal it's the same in human terms where you you that's your grocery store. The land is your grocery store. The land is where you get your sustenance from. I was just home and we were enjoying muskox and char and goose and eat, eating very well off the land. And that's what every single person in the city who eats any sort of meat, that's what you do. And even when you eat vegetables, even in the city, there's a lot of land that you know, you need to grow those vegetables. It's not a moral question and it never has been a moral question. So it's just astounding to me that people can find fault in humans participating in our natural ecosystem, habitat and environment. That's great, great answer. Um, is there anything surprising or poignant that you learned about yourself in the process of making this film that you would like to highlight? Uh, <laughs> it can be anything. I, I, uh, I think um, Chelsea did a good job. I, I didn't know. I, maybe I'm just more of a little shit. <laughs> 
than I thought I was. <laughs> I think you know. <laughs> oh, out on it. <laughs> I was talking to the film crew and didn't realize that uh, they were going to put it in the film. And I was like, oh, I am such a little shit. I just love it. Uh, and it was just really, really lovely to see my home from a different perspective, to see it, uh, like be in Toronto and see, see my home. Mm-hmm. What about myself? I, I didn't like looking at my face on the big screen that much. Like, I was just like, oh, that's a lot of my face. But I think maybe a lot of people, when they do a film, they feel that way, right? because I have to look at my face every day. So <laughs> I don't necessarily need more of it. But uh, that, yeah, that's, that's good. The way that Chelsea and the team outlined, outlined my home, seeing my home from a different perspective, perspective made me more proud to be where I'm from and more happy to be born and raised where I am born born and raised I'm very and more content I, I, the film probably made me more content mm. realizing what a wonderful family I have and what a great home I come from oh, that's wonderful you're really sneaky funny eh I yeah. <laughs> you're real sneaky even in the trailer I'm like oh she's funny I like it <laughs> <laughs> like it's a very it's very serious and educational but it's great to have that in it as well that's very important well I'm silly mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a silly person you know <laughs> but the, I was happy uh, because we didn't put a lot like I tend to the the humor that's in the film is quite nice like I tend to lean towards a very dark humor but we didn't get that much in there, so I don't look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, Chelsea, now as an, um, a, a kind of an outside perspective here, what is the most important thing that you would like t- for people to take away from this film? Or one of, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton, but um, anything that you want to highlight? Uh, I mean, I think like, overall what I hope people take like I hope people take in kind of the the full experience of the film like I I really um have always seen it as quite experiential and like um you know there um we tried to highlight um uh certain like really horrific things that are happening in Canada that I you know hope people um pay attention to or or sort of look inward and and consider um as Canadians like the relocation um and then I hope people also take sort of like the joy of um like the land and and Tanya in her home um as well like it's I think and you know that the idea is that all of that is can be contained in not really contained that's the wrong word but it's um yeah it sort of all flows from from the music so it's sort of every to hold everything all at once I guess is what I hope yeah it's it's um it, it's I love it like you said Tanya about um just these things this didn't happen you know all this time ago it's like it's happening now and it's very recent and it's very important and you could tell somebody to pick up a book and to read and to learn and that's why we thank you for this movie this documentary because it's giving people an entertaining outlet to learn um and uh, that's such a great way to retain information now um tanya you have won a polaris music prize you've won a juno we are an indie radio station what is next for you musically? Oh, there's there's a lot. Um, I'm writing more. Um, I, I wrote a book, Split Tooth, and I really enjoyed that process. And I'm writing more books musically. 
uh, they have another album in the works and I'm going to be, well, I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about. I want more, there's going to be more music uh, projects as well. I just think that uh, working, it's part of working. It's a, something that's continuous, something that naturally occurs. So there's more and more projects coming. It's very exciting. And I'm very lucky to be able to have these outlets and supports in to execute my ideas. Well, we're excited too. And I cannot wait to see Ever Deadly and I cannot wait to see what's next for you musically. Um, and I thank you both so much for joining me. Uh, it was lovely to meet you both. And uh, thank you very, very much for this film in advance. Oh, I like it. I hope you don't regret saying that after. <laughs> I will not trust me. It is right up my alley. And after talking to you both, I know I already know that I'm going to love it because <laughs> I well, want to hang out with you guys. So, <laughs> Melanie, you seem very fun. <laughs> Thanks again. Nice to meet you, Melanie. Take Enjoy care. Your week. Be proud. Yes.